Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the GTX 1080 Strix from Asus. So, I honestly thought I did this card ages ago, but apparently I didn't, so let's get on with it now. First things first, let's get through all the different VRMs that the card has that are necessary for, well, it to function. So, the first one down here, and GIMP is being stupid... This one down here is the 1.8 volt VRM that powers things like the EEP ROM chip, which is that there, that's the BIOS. As well as some of the internal PLLs of the GPU, it does absolutely nothing for overclocking, but it is necessary for the card to function. So if you're a repair shop, this thing is pretty important. If you're an overclocker, you couldn't care less. I mean, as long as it functions, which, you know, uh, you get the idea. Uh, un down here, we have the 5 volt VRM. Now this one is, I'd argue this one's more important because without this one, you wouldn't have any of the, like the other VRMs on the card don't work. And the reason for that is, is that the PCIe slot only provides 12 volts and 3.3 volts. So, uh, 12 volts and 3.3 volts then go, I'm not actually sure. This might be a 12 volt to 5 volt converter. Either way, this thing takes in 12 volts, converts it down to 5 volts, because 5 volts is necessary for the for some of the other chips on the GPU to run, like these right here. Those need 5 volts, I know that for sure. And some of the extra add-ons that Asus have put on for RGB and the fan control, those might also run on 5 volts. So that's why this is necessary. As well as gate drive on the MOSFETs up here will probably be running on 5 volts as well. So... Yeah, without this one, the VRMs won't work, but it doesn't actually, like, it doesn't do anything for the overclocking of the GPU core itself, so there's no reason to try tweak that voltage. Uh, down here, we find the PEX slash P PLL voltage. It depends on, like, well, it's been referred to both by different software and uh, manufacturers, so either works. This voltage sits at one volt uh, stock, and it powers some of the internal PLLs of the GPU core. It can help with overclocking on LN2, but it doesn't really do anything for air or water-cooled overclocking. It is necessary for the card to function, so no reason to try mod this one unless you're trying to run, you know, LN2. Above that, we find the vCore VRM, and above the vCore, we find the memory VRM up here. So that powers the GDDR5X. Uh, there should be one more VRM somewhere on this card, which I unfortunately can't find, and that's the 1.8 volts voltage for the GDDR5X chips, uh, because GDDR5X does not, like, I'm not really that well versed on how RAM works, but DDR3 and GDDR5, they would take their normal running voltage of 1.5 to 1.6 volts, they would take that voltage and pump it up, for one of the internal, for one of the functions inside the, inside the RAM. I can't remember what that function was. However, GDDR5X doesn't have that as an efficiency feature because that actually costs a lot of power to do on the chips themselves. So now there's a external 1.8 volt VRM that does that for GDDR5X and DDR4 has the same thing where it actually has a 2.5 volt pump voltage that is necessary for the chips to function. Fortunately, I have no idea where that's located on this card. So, and that, now, the good news is it doesn't generally do anything for overclocking either, but without it, the card won't run. So, you know, if you're a repair shop, you care. If you're an overclocker, it doesn't really matter that you can't find it. Now then, let's take a look at the vCore and the memory VRMs in more detail, because interestingly enough, this GPU does have a unlocked BIOS available for it, and I'll go into more detail to after we go over the VRMs here. So vCore VRM, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inductors, along with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight international rectifier power, power IR stages controlled by this thing right here, which is a UP9511. And that tells us this VRM is a true eight phase design because the UP9511 is an eight phase, uh, 600 kilohertz per phase voltage controller. Now the 600 kilohertz thing is actually a relatively low switching frequency. Um, as you can get 8-phase voltage controllers that go up to 2 megahertz switching frequency. 
However, running in excess of 500 kilohertz switching frequency on a VRM is generally not done because it sends the efficiency down the drain while not really doing anything for vol voltage stability. So most VRMs operate between 200 and 500 kilohertz. Uh, GPU, well, 200 kilohertz is more motherboard territory. 300 kilohertz to 500 is more common on GPUs. So this really doesn't, like, this is not an issue, especially with the high phase count, because, well, just because of how VRMs work, which I think there's a video that actually mentions why the phase count versus the frequency works out fine somewhere on the channel, so you can go find that if you're more interested in more information on that. I'm not really interested in explaining that right here. Now then, so we do have a true 8 phase. How much current capability does this VRM have? Well, it's using international rectifier power IR stages, and it's using the IR3555 variety. And these should be pretty, like, everybody who follows this channel regularly should be very much aware of what these are, because international rectifier uses them, well, Asus use them on a lot of cards. And they're also, well, not just Asus, a lot of manufacturers use these. So these are the usual 60 amps, 125 degrees centigrade, 300 kilohertz switching frequency. Um, and these are really, really nice part. I mean, they are the highest uh, rated part in the International Rectifier 3550 series, um, as there is a 3570 series, which goes, I think, to 75 amps maximum. Either way, uh, these are... 60 amps per phase with eight phases. That means the core on this GPU is, is limited to 480 amps continuous. So ridiculous overkill because a 1080 at stock pulls about 160 amps from the vCore VRM and runs on 1.06 volts. So yeah, th this VRM is just absolutely overkill for a GTX 1080. If you want to throw this on LN2, you're fine. If you want to throw this on water, you're fine. If you want to throw it on air, you're fine. If you want to do, like, there's really nothing that this, that, like, you know, no problem powering anything with this VRM. Like, really, really nice VRM we have here. Now then, well, actually, there are cards that would actually give this VRM a a workout, but this one is not it. So, you know, good job Asus with the VRM there. The memory VRM is a two phase. We have two inductors and three MOSFETs per phase. We have two low side and one high side. Controlled by this right here, which I suspect to be a UP1666. This is a 300 to 600 kilohertz uh, two phase voltage controller and it integrates the drivers and the, what was it? Well, no, it integrates the driver channel, the, the MOSFET, the gate drive for the MOSFETs. So there's no actual driver ICs on the, anywhere near the memory VRM because this hooks up directly to the MOSFETs instead of going through a driver IC. So this will get somewhat hot because drivers actually use up quite a bit of power in a VRM. Now then the actual MOSFETs themselves, the high side is a 30, <coughs> and I keep messing this up, 3054, and the low side is a 3056. And you know what, I'll go quickly check that I haven't made a mistake again, though I've done this three times already, and I've gotten it right every single time. Yeah, okay, I am right. <laughs> So it is the 3056 for the low side and the 3054 from the high side. Uh, and these are QM series MOSFETs from Ubix Semiconductor, which is sister company? Maybe even like literally the same company as UPI Semiconductor because they do share a website. Um, so yeah, and Asus likes using these MOSFETs all over the place. They're relatively high power. They're actually pretty powerful MOSFETs. Uh, they don't, they aren't super efficient though. So while theoretically, um, if by some miracle you had unlimited cooling potential, 
at 125 degrees centigrade. So that's basically saying y you can always keep the VRM at 125 degrees, assuming a 500 kilohertz switching frequency and a running voltage of 1.35 volts, which is what GDDR5X runs on. Uh, this VRM right here should be able to provide about 142 amps while producing 57 watts of heat. So that's why I said unlimited cooling potential. So that's not really going to happen. Now at 80 amps, you're going to be looking at 23 watts of heat, which is somewhat more usable as this is a relatively high surface area. Um, like it's a relatively large surface area to try cool. But the good news for you is that neither of those really matter because GDDR5X really doesn't need that much power and this VRM will never be going past uh, sort of, and I ran out of space again, past 20 to 30 amps. Uh, really depends on how much load is on the memory chip, uh, on the memory system at the time. So, and at those kinds of power draw levels, this VRM will be only putting out about three to five watts of heat. So this is gonna run really, really cool, uh, which is actually why Asus have gone for six MOSFETs. If they had less MOSFETs, it would run hotter. It would burn more power as you can get more efficiency by putting more MOSFETs in parallel, especially on the low side, that makes a big difference. So memory VRM is also really, really nice. Uh, but so, yeah, so both the memory and vCore VRM are great on this card. Now let's go over why this card is kind of cool um, in a sort of other sense. So I'm not going to show you how to do any volt mods on this card or power mods. And the reason, well, you might need a volt mod for the memory VRM and you have these voltage read points up there for that. But you don't need to do power mods on this card, and you don't need to mod the V-Core on this card, because this card has a custom unlocked by Well, it's not custom. It's an unlocked BIOS available for it. It disables pretty much all power limits and gives you voltage control, which I don't know where it tops out, but I know you can go well beyond 1.2 volts, so significantly above the usual limit of NVIDIA's 1.093 volts, because our stuff will die instantly if you give it too much voltage. Um, whereas I haven't actually seen any proof of that being the case. <clears throat> so I really, really doubt that. Um, especially considering that 14 nanometer from AMD runs, no, 14 nanometer from Glowflow runs way higher voltages than, NVID than 16 nanometer TSMC. So I think NVIDIA is mostly doing it because the power efficiency goes out the window when you actually tweak the voltage up. But this card does have a custom BIOS that, you know, custom, no, it's not custom, unlocked BIOS for it. And according to the forum post, which I'm going to be linking down in the description below, uh, which was made by Dan Kopp, who has a 1080 and tested the BIOS uh, at 1.25 volts, the card is cap his card is capable of hitting 2.3 gigahertz on air cooling. The thing to keep in mind, however, is at that point, you're looking at a... 50% or higher increase in power draw, which is not an issue from the, like, the VRM on the card doesn't care. It honestly, like, 50% more power draw on a 1080 is still not enough to really put the VRM at, you know, to give the VRM problems. And it's not a problem for you as far as the NVIDIA power limit goes because the BIOS disables that. It is, however, a problem in terms of cooling as the card will get either very loud or very, very hot. If you're still on the air cooler, if you're on water cooling, then, you know, you're on water cooling. You shouldn't have an issue. Um, so do keep that in mind if you try use the BIOS. And yeah, it's it very much throws your efficiency out the window, which is kind of what happens when you raise the voltage by 20%. You know, that's kind of predictable. So yeah, but well, that's really cool. Now, unfortunately... Uh, even though this card has that lovely BIOS available for it, this card does not have dual BIOS functionality, so flash responsibly, which basically means if you don't know how to recover a failed BIOS flash, don't flash. Um, that's going to be my... Don't go flashing a 400... No, this thing's like 500 quid, isn't it? Yeah, don't flash a 1080. Okay, first flash something else. If you get the hang of flashing something cheaper and less likely to break, then... And, and, you know, you, you figure out how to do it there and you get it working on that card, then go and do it to your 1080. Don't start with 
a really really high end card because if you screw up the bios flash for whatever reason you're you're gonna have a really hard time recovering um well you could end up having a really hard time recovering as sometimes i've heard of cases where you where a failed bios flash will actually trip the right protection on the on the bios chip and if that happens then you actually have to go soldering onto the gpu to get it to work to get the bios chip writable again like you literally it trips write protection so you can't actually write to the bio so you can't fix it without physically modifying the card and you'll be very very screwed if that happens so yeah um you know cool card in my opinion especially the fact that the bios is available and i'm hoping that asus do the same thing for the 1080 ti because they did it for the 1080 Strix, we have that custom BIOS available, so I'm really hoping that sometime soon the 1080 Ti will get a similar BIOS. If you want to find that BIOS, it will be down in the description below. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below about whatever the hell you want. And if you would like to support what I do here at Actually Hardcore Overclocking, I have a Patreon and a PayPal, and there are AHOC shirts, and you can all f find all of those things also down in the description below the video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.